Hey everyone, it's Kelly here and oh, we have the jingle of cats as always uh, to accompany us. I don't know if she's going to come and join us on the screen today, but if you hear jingling, just know it's cats wandering around. Nothing to worry about. Today we are talking about books that I have hauled. I have a massive book haul to share with you. Um, surprise, surprise, I can't control myself and I buy and acquire books at the speed of light. So let me show you what I've acquired recently. <laughs> um, we're going to start with, um, it, th these are all just sort of in a random mixed order, um, but I'm just going to share them with you and I'll tell you about where I got them from if I can remember. Um, otherwise, I will not. Uh, so the first one is called On Freedom by Tori Shepherd, um, and it has... A blurb on the front by Annabelle Crabb, who is an author and TV presenter and journalist that I respect very much, um, uh, saying, The world is full of comment comments pages showing how hard it is for a woman to say she doesn't want children. In this thought-provoking book, Tori Shepherd does it with clarity and verve. So um, basically, this is talking, it's a, a very, very short um, essay, and it's going to be talking about um women who choose not to have children um so it sounds really interesting so that's on freedom by tori shepherd the next book i have acquired is the house of the spirits by isabel allende and this is the book that we are going to be reading for my um around reading around the world book club for the month of june so i have my copy um and i'm looking forward to reading it although it is pretty chunky um this one i oh i forgot to say this one i just happened to find on special at a bookshop that i was popping into when i was nearby as one does um this one however i ordered because i'm going to be reading it now it is a long one so although i am looking forward to reading it it's almost 500 pages so it's a bit of a chunky one i'm gonna try i think sorry did i say june i meant may so in the month of may we're going to be reading this um and i am yeah so i think i might make a start on this one a little early because it is such a big chunky book and I'm worried I don't want to I don't want to not be able to get through it in the month um so that you know I can't participate in the chat about it so looking forward to getting to this one and I'm going to have to work hard to make sure that I get through it in good time okay next one is just another random one that was on sale and i picked up it's called ada lovelace cracks the code and it's part of the um rebel girls so i don't know if you're familiar with the rebel girls um series but they do the first one they had was called goodnight stories for rebel girls which i've got a copy of somewhere probably sitting around here somewhere anyway I won't go looking for it now. Um, <laughs> however, uh, basically, it sort of just talks about women in history, but in wor words and sort of a, a brief synopsis. That book was kind of one page, um, like little story about that woman and what she achieved in her life. Um, and this one, I'm assuming, is going to go into a little bit more depth about Ada Lovelace um, and sort of her role in the beginning of kind of computers and and um coding and so on um that kind of paved the way for the modern um the modern computers that we have today so very excited to get to this one at some point it's a nice easy read with large print so it shouldn't be too hard to get through and looking forward to it Oh, this next one was a uh, a doozy. Um, so I was away, um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen me post about this. I was away on a weekend with my husband. We went to um, a gorgeous place called Kayama, and while we were there, of course, we popped in to see the secondhand stores and local bookshops as well. Um, and I managed to find a copy of Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, and um, it was three dollars i was so excited um and you could tell i was excited because when i saw the spine in the bookshelf i grabbed it so fast i surprised myself i don't know what i was what my brain was like if you don't get this fast someone else is going to get it 
Um, but yeah, excited because everyone's talking about this book and I really am interested in the concept of it. I've heard mixed reviews, but I'm keen to get to it at some point um, and kind of see what the hype is all about. So that's before the coffee gets cold. Looking forward to it. Um, this was one that was just on sale on, um, I bought it on the internet, um, and that is uh, How to Be Both by Ali Smith, um, which was the 2014 Costa Novel of the Year, and it was also shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2014. Um, and it won the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2015. So very um, interested to read this one. I don't really know much about it um, other than uh, hmm. it's sort, it seems like it's kind of a modern tale. So it says a Renaissance, Renaissance artist of the 1460s, a child of a child of the 1960s, two tales of love and injustice, twist into a singular yarn where time gets timeless, knowing gets mysterious, fiction gets real, and all life's givens get given a second chance. So it sounds really, really interested, interested, interesting, um, and I'm keen to get to it. I keep saying that. I'm keen to get to all of these books. This is why I'm buying them. <laughs> um, okay, the next one is one I bought full price new in a bookshop. Um, again, I think this was on my Kayama trip. I picked this one up because um, I like to go in and check out the independent bookstores and see what's what. Um, and this one is uh, by an Australian author called Drackey French, who was our children's laureate for some time, not currently, um, but she is a prolific writer. Uh, and this one is called Ming and Flo Fight for the Future, The Girls Who Change the World. Now, I read about this book um, before it was released and was really interested to get a copy of it um, because it sounded fascinating. Um, so it says 12-year-old Ming Kong Huang is convinced that girls must have changed the world, even if they are rarely mentioned in history books. So when Ming gets the chance to go back in time, she imagines herself changing destinies from a glittering palace or an explorer's ship. Instead, she ends up in Australia in 1898, living a tough life as Flo Watson on a drought-stricken farm. Luckily, Ming is rescued by Flo's aunt McTavish. Wealthy Aunt McTavish belongs to Louisa Lawson's Suffragist Society, who are desperately and courageously fighting for women's rights. And Ming is determined to get involved to make a difference. But change is never easy. So how can one girl change the world? Um, fascinating concept, right? So um, I'm really interested to read this one, uh, especially sort of how, how it, um, you know, kind of looks at, a history um history as that as it could have been written if it were written by women um because you know so much of that narrative disappears uh because so many of the writers were men um so i'm really interested to hear all about this and kind of look at how Jackie French has tackled this subject um and yeah this is a this is a middle grade book i would say um and I think it's going to be a really important one moving forward. Um, so I'm really uh, looking forward to reading and reviewing this one um, and being able to hopefully recommend it to lots of the fun, cool little people <laughs> in my life. Uh, so that's that one. Now, this is one that I purchased on the strength of many uh, recommendations um, of people that I have, that I know or um, connected with in some way and that is I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. Uh, now I had never heard of this book. It came out some time ago. Let me see exactly when. Uh, so it was I think written in 1988? No. 1995. Uh, so it's originally written in French and uh, was first published in English in 1997. So, yeah, it's a little bit old and I'd never heard of it before, but I've had a few people uh, that I'm connected with who've read this book and have absolutely adored it um, and been floored by it. So I had to get myself a copy. It's also a nice short one. Um, so it's just probably, I'm going to guess about three 
oh gosh, I was going to say 300 pages. I'm well off. It's 188 pages. So it's a very short one. Um, so I'm keen to, to find out what the fuss is all about and to, um, yeah, to see if I too am one of these people who is going to love this book. Um, another book that I purchased on the basis of recommendation um, is The Last Cuentista uh, by Donna Barba Higuera. Um, and I believe that this book was um, an award winner in America. I don't know much about it other than it's sci-fi, um, which is unusual for um, a sci-fi book to win just a children's um, book award. Um, but it's also incredibly readable is what I've heard. So I'm really, and, and, you know, not so it's sci-fi light, I guess. Um, so you don't have to be a massive sci-fi person to kind of appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I am very excited to get to this one at some point soon. Um, but let me tell you about it from the blurb. A girl named Petra Penna, who wanted nothing more than to be a storyteller like her abuelita. But Petra's world is ending. Earth has been destroyed by a comet and only a few hundred scientists and their children, among them Petra and her family, have been chosen to journey to a new planet. They are the ones who must carry on the human race. Hundreds of years later, Petra wakes to this new planet and the discovery that she is the only person who remembers Earth. A sinister collective has taken over the ship during its journey, bent on erasing the sins of humanity's past. <coughs> Excuse me. They have systematically purged the memories of all aboard or, or purged them altogether. Petra alone now carries the stories of our past and with them any hope for our future. Can she make them live again? Uh, so I'm, it sounds really fascinating, um, a fascinating concept and sort of focused on the power of story, which I love. So very excited for this one. Uh, I just came across this book. It's very, very slim, as you can see. Um, and it's called How to Keep House Wild Browning by KC Davis. Uh, 31 Days of Compassionate Help. Um, yeah, some... I, mean, I I can't be the only person who struggles to kind of keep on top of housework while working and, um, you know, just trying to get by. Um, so, yeah, I, I need help. Help me, please, KC Davis. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking forward to getting to that one and hopefully getting on top of um, my housework. <laughs> Um, another non-fiction title that I've picked up, which is very unusual for me because I'm not massive on non-fiction um, in terms of what I'm reading on the day to day. But I am very have been drawn to a couple of quite specific topics. And this is one of them. The Female Investor, <laughs> Creating Wealth, Security and Freedom Through Property by Nicola McDougall and Kate Hill. Uh, this is a 2022 publication, I believe. Um, and it is talking, as you can imagine, about, uh, yeah, 2022, um, basically about financial security for women. Um, and, you know, I know that there are a lot of things, um, a lot of factors to financial security. Um, you know, I consider myself to be a relatively privileged person. Um, and I even though I didn't grow up with a whole lot of money. Um, I'm still, I'm a white person. Uh, I've, I married a husband who already owned a house. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm a relatively uh, privileged person in a privileged position. However, I am interested in um, the topic of uh, financial security for women because I know that a lot of women are... Um, find themselves in their sort of mid fifties, uh, getting divorced and, um, having not enough to survive on. Um, they're in Australia at least, and I imagine this would, would ring true in other parts of the world too. They're the fastest growing group of homeless people, um, in our country, uh, which is a scary thought. And there are, are reasons why that is a thing. Um, so please don't come at me about there not being a wage gap between men and women. It 
happens and it happens because of social situations so the fact that so many women especially women who are now in their mid 50s um, and older uh, put their careers aside at least for a time to raise children or um, you know who uh, don't aren't a don't have the skills that they would otherwise because they started their families young um, and so on so you know there is a massive gap between what men and women walk away with from a divorce at the at um, in their mid 50s which is not to say that that's what I'm expecting is going to happen for me but I just um I'm fascinated and want to learn more about that and also to look at sort of some of the the ways in which I can invest the money I do have um, at this point to sort of shore up my family, <laughs> um, my family, family's financial security. So that's what I'm keen to learn more about and that's what I'm going to be reading about in The Female Investor. Uh, still three more books to go. Gosh, this is a big haul. Okay, the next one is Hannah Gadsby's 10 Steps to Nanette. This has just come out. I'm very excited to read it. I pre-ordered it and it arrived um, and I am very keen to get to it. However, it's a long one. Uh, so 300 and, oh, it's not that long, 384, I guess because it's in this hardcover um, kind of large, large margin kind of uh, situation that it felt like it was longer than it was but that's yeah it's a bit of a chunker anyway uh, but I'm really interested to learn more about um, how Hannah Gadsby kind of got to the point of doing her special Nanette um, she's an Australian comedian um, and she uh, came to uh, she was always already known in Australia but she came to international fame via her stand-up show Nanette um, which was on Netflix and, um, you know, is now kind of beloved around the world. So very interested in this one and excited to read more about her life. Uh, I don't remember why I got this one other than the author is one of the long-listed authors for the Women's Prize, Elif Shafak, um, The Island of Missing Trees. Actually, is this the one that is the one that's nominated it is that's why I got it <laughs> I got it because it's one of the nominated ones the island of missing trees um by Elif Shafak and I'm uh obviously keen to read um the long list for the women's prize maybe not all of it but a few of the books that I sort of that kind of stood out to me as being potentially quite interesting um so yeah it should be a good one uh, and the last book is one that I did not purchase. It was a gift um, from my cats. As uh, if you've been a follower of this channel for some time, you might know that my cats from time to time like to buy me a present um, and they buy me books and wrap them up and put them in my book cart until I just find them. Um, and so this one is called uh, Women of Australia, Outstanding Images Celebrating 50 Years of Toll and Triumph by Bruce Postle. Bruce, Bruce Postle is um, a journalistic photographer. Um, so a lot of these images are sort of um, from his time taking photos for newspapers in Australia. Um, and there are a mixture of unknown people and also um, known people as well, uh, people who are celebrities or who were celebrities at the time i'm struggling to find one um, we've got wives of politicians we've got everyday sort of people um and yeah as i said celebrities as well um so here are some so that's ruth cracknell on the left and denise drysdale on the right um who are Australian celebrities so yeah it should be an interesting read um just sort of looking at the photos and reading the blurbs about kind of the the story behind taking the image or learning a little bit more about each of the people uh so that's that I'm not going to hold up the stack of books because there's too many um for me to do it safely um and it looks like it's going to be a big heavy pile so i will um leave you there lots of exciting books on the horizon for me and as always ever vigilant for a uh, bookshop or a little free library um to add to my collection 
<laughs> all right thanks everyone i'll see you on the next one bye